headquarters from enemy attack. We call it the remote radio transmission system. Here is an isometric picture of our remote location. For convenience, we've done it as a trailer, but it can be done in a pallet or in a transportable shelter. Conventional headquarters. The vehicles are located within an area of typically 100 square yards and it's not protected from detection of EW, it's not protected from uh, UAVs, it's subject to counter-battery attack, it's unprotected, not good. You can afford, I suppose, to lose the odd general or two, but you can't replace the majors and lieutenant colonels quickly that, that have got experience, so you want to protect your headquarters where possible. Our solution is to convert the RF signal to fibre, run it up to three to five kilometres from the location of the headquarters, convert it back to RF, uh, massage it, put it through power amplifiers and send it out to antennas that you've installed to simulate a typical headquarters. Therefore, your headquarters is protected from EW detection because you've removed all your masts, yagis, dish antennas for microwave quips, it makes it very difficult for the UAVs to detect it as long as your cam boys have done a good job. These are the frequencies that we cover in general. Nominal powers, 150 watts or 400 watts for HF. This is a block diagram of the current system that is installed in the UK uh, using a Harris radio system. It's a single channel only. Uh, where it dif ours differs is we are multi-channel. So we can do it in multiples of six for the time the number of vehicles that you want to put into the link. These are the frequencies which we use uh, in our system to uh, do the multiplexing. This is the overall fibre optic specification. Again, the view of it, but we've now got a graph showing you the various pieces of equipment in there. We have 16 reels for coax cable. Each reel will hold 100 metres of cable. The cable drums are motorised for winding or rewinding. This uh, saves time and also protects the coax. We have two drums for fibre optic cable. The green at the right hand side is your fuel cell. We use a fuel cell because it is small, it is quiet, it has a low thermal signature because we use a cool fuel cell rather than the hot ones. The red on the, on the left hand side is, the, is three days fuel for the fuel cell running at full power. Currently we're planning to use three kilowatts but we could also update it to five kilowatts if required. The little black circle is a gas tank for that little green slot in the side, which is the stove for the soldiers to cook their meals on. Now, I see a smile there, a couple of smiles. Well, I'm a firm believer that in Napoleon's comment, an army marches on its stomach. If you have warm food for a soldier, he'll put up with a lot of other discomfort you don't provide him hot meals and he's going to get unhappy quite quickly. Not easily seen there is a little purple piece uh, blocked out mainly by the fiber optic drums. That is a radiator to cool the air coming out of the fuel cell. 
which is then fed back over the top of the fuel cell and dispersed out the side to lower the thermal profile. You can't see there, but you'll see later on water storage of um, 40 litres water supply for the soldiers, for drinking water and general purpose. Here is the front and rear views, so you can see it, it's a little better. The black tubes is for holding antennas, antenna masts and tripods. You can see there again, and you can see the green for the water tank. Side view, again you can see the cooking stove which disappears into the trailer and you just pull it out when you're ready to um, prepare a hot meal. You'll see that we've got two si sizes of um, tubes. We might change those to square rather than round. Uh, we won't know until we get further down the design stage of the antenna masts and uh, tripods we use. So the big ones are for the tripods, the small ones are for the masts and individual antennas. The light green is the electronics boxes. So coming in on the On the left hand side is the in fiber optic in and reconstruction side. The right hand side, looking from the front to the rear, is the filters, power amplifiers, matrix switches, uh, and test equipment. So it's fully uh, test function. Test functions are provided for the technician to monitor the signals before they go into the amplifier and after they go out of the amplifier. Trailer specifications, you can see that's blank at this stage for the simple reason that we uh, are still waiting for some information from the Australian Department of Defence on what, the, what height they want the trailers to be, whether it's to be on a five tonne truck or uh, a six by six. We've got the option of providing a tailgate that can handle either. Power source, three or five kilowatts. 240 AC, single phase, for Australian conditions, but for other countries, we can make it 110 volts. That's just a specification item. Storage batteries can be provided. We don't recommend it except for one set, one bank of batteries for the fuel cell to start it after it's been non-operational for a while. We will also, not shown there, but provide space for a five kilowatt diesel generator. So if the fuel cell goes down, you're not left high and dry. But the problem with the diesel is they make noise and I don't like noise. Cable drums, as I al already mentioned, they are 26 volt DC motors to wind or rewind. This is to make the life of the soldier easier but also to protect the cable. There are flexible couplings or joints used in the inside the drum to uh, remove the need to connect or disconnect the coax at the drum side when operational. Antennas. They're quite often GFE, gov government furnished equipment. We can supply them ourselves, we can supply the masts from external sources if required. It's to your desire. The left hand one is one which has been developed by a company in Sydney. 
um, and is currently being evaluated by the Australian Department of Defence and it's a broadband VHF, 32, 5, 12 megs approximately. The other one is the uh, Omni, well-known style, uh, sourced from the US. These two are British, which I took off the web just to show you the, some of the styles of different masks that are available. This is the basic specification of the remote system. It's basically um, repeating what I've already told you, but it's in hard copy. The matrix switch. I covered this in much more detail yesterday. If anyone is interested in this presentation or information on the matrix switch, please see me afterwards. I've got um, memory sticks with the presentations on it and additional details about our company. Again, the statistics of the local system are brief because we're still waiting on the custom, uh, custom being part of the Australian Defence Department on what they want or how they want it mounted within the vehicle. But basically the minimum system is the coax relay to switch from the regular antenna to the, to the uh, RF to fibre converter and we don't know whether the equipment's going to be internally or externally mounted and how we're going to connect to the fibre optic cable. Our engineering capabilities. Uh, the only one that some of you mightn't be familiar with is a quadrature hybrid splitter combiner. This is a technique that is relatively narrow band to relatively broad band but its advantage is that it is very low loss and has low thermal uh, characteristics. Unless the signals going in are unbalanced, then the thermal characteristics increase, so you've got to allow for suitable heat sinks. And these are the contact details for myself. I'm available on Skype, phone, email, and uh, I'm happy to answer questions at any time. Now, some of the things we've got in the pipeline are a loop antenna for HF, which is self-tracking and can be used for over-the-horizon communications, uh, near vertical uh, antenna communications. When it's not operational, it's in the horizontal position. You raise it to 90 degrees, you set your bearing that you want it to track to. So if it's you want to go due east, you set it 90 degrees from magnetic north. You set your elevation to bounce your radio signals off the ionosphere. So then you can go from valley to valley, 10 miles apart, or if you're in Hawaii or Guam and you want to talk to uh, the states, let's say Camp, Camp Pendleton, you look up your chart, it will tell you the distance, you look up the information provided by um, your headquarters who have a frequency management system who which will tell you what the height of the ionosphere is and the most suitable frequencies for the distance you want to travel and you set it to that and you've got not instant but pretty close to instant HF communication. It has a low uh, profile so it also reduces uh, the possibility of enemy um, interception. Whereas with equipment, because it's omnidirectional, they can pick it up from any direction. With this, it has a narrow beam pattern, so you've got to be on the sidelines to, de to detect it. 
We're also working on tunable uh, bandpass filters. These will be come really into their own when the radio manufacturers can provide the information on the frequency that is to be transmitted on a high-speed frequency hopping radio. Uh, we can measure, these filters can measure off the frequency being transmitted, but there is a lag time. So that is a quick thumbnail sketch, and thank you for your time. Thanks, Bill. Um, we've got some time for questions. So I'm, I'm going to I'm going to go for for a couple of quick questions here. So I've got uh, I've got a radio that I already already bought. Uh, it's in my talk, and I want to put your system out five kilometers away. Um, do I connect the dongle to the uh, antenna port on the on the standard radio I use, or uh, yes, okay, and that'll translate it into RF. Uh, or into uh, fiber signals which run out there and you multiplex them? Yes. Okay. And from there it goes... Uh, to a recom recompiler, Gen turns it back to the original RF signal, then goes through switches to various amplifiers because we've got multiple amplifiers, so that what I call the dumb switch. Then it goes through the amplifiers and comes out through uh, filters, because I like to have a nice clean signal going up my mast. Then it goes into a smart matrix, which is our standard or advanced one, and it selects the most suitable antenna. Does uh, is there a bidirectional telemetry so that I can sit back at the talk and see how the stuff is going? I I don't want to interrupt the guys' meals while they're cooking, so. Uh, we provide an order wire. That is to say there is communication over the system between the headquarters and the remote site. Okay. Can we adapt it to uh, telemet telemetering of data back to it? If that is a requirement, we can do it. But my attitude is tough if they're interrupted during their cooking. They're there to do a job not to sit on their butts and cook and eat food. Other questions? Okay. All right, Bill, thank you very much.